Today's Sunday service. Our call to worship is taken from Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. My name will be great among the nations, from where the sun rises to where it sets. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to me, because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, great is your name. You are the Creator and our Almighty God. And we gather together this morning to praise your name. Thank you that we've been able to meet together over Zoom to fellowship with one another and to meet with you and to have service and just to continue these connections um, and just to continue to meet with you and learn from your scripture um, over this time and with the different restrictions. And thank you that we will be returning to church next week in person, God. Um, may our reopening um, go smoothly and may everyone also stay safe. Um, yeah, um, may we continue to praise you and recognize your goodness in all different circumstances. Um, yeah, um, as we continue worship this morning, may you soften our hearts and prepare us to receive your word today. Thank you that you love us so much. Um, we love you and we ask that you would teach us to love you more each day. Um, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's sing and praise to our God together. Oh, mm -hmm. 
see I am a little bit different. I have my suit on. Do you know why? Because today is a very important day. Today is our last Zoom service. And the last means like there, there will be no more, I believe. <laughs> I pray that there will be no more Zoom service, which means we are going back to in person. We will never come back to here, I hope. I hope um, that will be end everything. We'll be back to the new normal, hopefully. Um, so um, uh, today will be the last chance. Um, two weeks ago, I, I did something different uh, for our pastoral prayer uh, to ask you guys to uh, type your prayer request. And surprisingly, there are so many actually. So I, I really want uh, for today. This is our last Zoom service, so we can do this time. Uh, this very last time as well, if you can, um, if you have some really prayer requests. Last time, many people are, uh, are only uh, doing the private uh, to on, on the chat, just uh, personally to me is okay, still okay. So I want you guys to think about what what kind of what 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 prayer requests you have today, and what worries you have, and then we can pray uh, for you as a church together. And so you can do it. I give you some time. You can put it on check. If you want to give it to everyone, it's okay. If you just want to check, uh, give it to me. It's still okay. I will pray for you. I think I, I don't. I don't. I will not uh, say your name. So it was still kind of private. So don't worry. If, and also we will pray for uh, reopening for sure uh, for next week. So um, I give you some time if you can. I'll put it on a check. And then we we'll wait a little bit, okay? Thank you. So someone want to pray for um, the COVID situation, right? I think uh, uh, we really believe, uh, we, really, we really hope that uh, COVID will be end soon. And uh, so, yeah, that is very important for us to continue to pray. And so I want to pray for people in Hong Kong. Yes, if you know the situation in Hong Kong, it's not okay, not really, not really good. Um, my family is still in Hong Kong, and um, now they have so many cases, and the situation is not easy. Okay, I pray. I, I will. I will wait for one more minute. Don't worry about the silence. God loves the silence, so I will continue to wait, and then we will pray.
Okay, let's pray together. Father God, we, we come to you. We believe that you are listening to our prayer. We believe that we are not just talking to the air. We believe that you are almighty God. And you know everything. And you know, even before we pray, you already know. And Father, we just want to uh, pray for you. Pray to you and uh, we pray for everyone that um, the situation is so different for everyone. So, so many people are adjusting. So many people are uh, in stress. And then so many people are, are worried about schools. And so many people are praying for their work. So Lord, we, we know uh, we cannot like pray for uh, every single details about everyone, but Father, you know, because you are with us always. And we just lift up everyone in here, especially we pray for uh, the COVID situation. We pray for the things that was happening in the past, like the last like, two years, like it, it, it was not, not easy for all of us. And um, we, we have been uh, trying to, to adjust the new normal like doing Zoom service, doing so many things online. Uh, but as a younger generation, I believe we really want to see our friends. We really want to um, have, have our, all the events in person again. And Father, we pray that um, the next week we were going for uh, in-person worship again, and we were no longer to have Zoom service. And Father, we are happy for that and we praise you for that and we give thanks for you and father may you uh, continue to uh, help everyone uh, to adjust the new uh, in person again maybe not everyone want uh, know, knowing how to uh, 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 break ice uh, and agree one another not easy to uh, see one another again but lord uh, somehow we really want to see our friends as well there may be some stress anxiety again but Lord, be with us. We know that because of you, we are learning how we can love one another. Teach us, Lord. Continue to be with everyone. And also pray for, especially uh, the Hong Kong situation. Uh, our, our hometown has suffered so much right now. And they have so many cases. And uh, some of them are very not knowing what, what to do. And in, in Hong Kong situation, we know it's very like crowded and, and it is hard um, for, for the government to, to do everything and, and more may your mercy on, on, on our homeland. May your mercy on Hong Kong and help them. They have been like suffered so, so much already for these past maybe three, four years or even more. Father, may your mercy, may your goodness come uh, to, to this place, may Hong Kong will have peace once again. Father, we thank you. We live up today's service to you, and uh, may you uh, come. May the Holy Spirit be with everyone and touch our hearts. Father, we thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray. You have to unmute yourself. I thought I pressed it. Okay. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 52. The request of James and John. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do what for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who have, for whom it has been prepared. 
And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever will be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. They came to Jericho. As he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they take, they, they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling to you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. So thank you, uh, Ashton. Uh, for reading the scripture for us today, we are talking about a a an issue like very important for us. Do you know what you are asking? That is from the scripture. Um, so um, today is the Winter Olympic, the last day of the Winter Olympic. I don't I don't know uh, you you like it or not. I am not big fan fan of uh, uh, winter sports though. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. So I, I'm not really following it. Um, but today is the last day, and uh, I follow the summer Olympic more. Um, uh, but uh, I, I knew a news is like this one: uh, Canada win uh, won the first ever Olympic gold medal with for the women team pursuit speak skating in Beijing, right? And they are against Jap Japan Japanese team, and and at the end they they are they are so cool like the the uh, different laps and then the final laps the Japanese the last player was fell right and and then Canada won the gold medal. I'm just thinking about this, uh, but very like a, a a kind of like a theological questions about this is like what if they are all believers and they are all they all they both pray for for God and and for sure I believe when they are praying for God uh, they will not they will not pray I want to fall I want I, I want to fail on on my last lap they they will pray for victory or they will pray for uh, good performance or something like that right so um, if they are all believers they pray for that then someone someone's prayer will not be answered. Right? Someone's prayer will not be answered, and which means someone would have an answered prayer. Um, I don't know about your your situation. Do you have many an answered prayer? For me, I, I pray for so many things. Yeah, for sure, I have an answered prayer as well. I, I remember um, before I came to this church, I was in the other church for 10 years, and I... I my my previous church was a very small church. My uh, I describe a little bit. It's like uh, my office was very small at that time, and then my office was actually also uh, the children ministry place. So I, I was in in in, in my uh, on my desk to do work, and then behind me is like toy and everything. Like you you can imagine. Like but that means it's not that big, and then we we don't have many. Uh, children as well. We don't have many younger generation as well. So, so I remember one time 
I am praying for, I'm praying with uh, two sisters, uh, a church leaders. I'm praying for the second generation. I'm praying for, uh, I really want to nurture young, young people, younger generation. And we pray actually for a long, long time. At the end of my, my year, uh, we have more younger generation there. Um, but then when I leave the church, when I come to this place, now it's like five years in, in here. And then I can say, <clears throat> I can say that prayer like 15 years ago was answered many, many years. But, but during that time, during the time, especially in the first couple of years, uh, we, we pray, we pray, but the, um, the, the, the prayer was not answered. What is going on? We're so frustrated and then what was happening, right? But, but the thing is like, um, C.S. Lewis pointed out one interesting thing that he said, the real problem of an answer prayer is like different thing. It's not just the, just the an answer prayer itself. He said, it's not why we feel so, it's so frequent. But why the opposite result is so lavishly promised, and that is the real uh, problem of an answer prayer. I think that is very, very so wise because you know um, what? Because the the Bible is really talking about like if you ask, you will you will be given, right? Remember those those uh, promise, right? The Bible said. In Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will be fine and knock and the door will be open <coughs> to you. And then in John 14, 14, said, you may ask me for anything, right? In my name. We, we, when we pray, we, we ask in Jesus' name, right? And then Jesus said in here, and I will do it. Very interesting. This is a promise from God and, and God will do it for us. For sure, it will. You, you need to not. You cannot just take this scripture out. You need to have the context to understand the scripture for sure, right? But the thing is, um, the Bible is promised. But then we we are encounter so much like an answer prayer. What is going on? Yeah, for sure. Um, like for me, um, I I praying for my my parents to to believe in Christ, praying for their salvation for also fifteen years. And it was answered. Um, we need to take time somehow, right? So, so today the passage somehow is not like really like an, uh, a, 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 a talking about prayer, but interestingly, there's a two two story there, right? The first one is like uh, James and John is asking for Jesus for something, and they did not get it. But finally, they 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 may get it, but in in the other way. And then the same same story is about a blind blind man is asking for Jesus for something and Jesus instantly gave him and and in, in verse 36 and in verse 51 Jesus is asking the exactly the same question to them what do you want me to do for you exactly the same and this is kind of like I, I'm asking you for a prayer request for sure I cannot give you anything because I'm not Jesus but I'm like asking for the prayer request, just like Jesus is asking, hey, what do you want me to do for you? He's asking, what is in your mind? What is your prayer request? What do you really want? And, and, then, and then when they when, when when James and John is asking for something and then Jesus is not answering for, it is not giving for them. But when the blind man is asking for, I, I want to see, and then Jesus gave him, I said, what's going on? Like just like the the, the winter Olympic had the two two um, national team, they're asking, if they are asking for the same thing, why one team got the victory, one team was was not okay? What, what is happening? So today, I really want to go for this as like, how should we handle an answer prayer? So there will be like three points in here. The first one is, do you know what you are asking? The second, value the process and result. The third one is God's timing and our timing. So we can think about that. It's about the unanswered prayer. How should we handle it? The first one, do you know what you are asking? This is like, I think it's the very main thing for us. Um, in, in Mark, um, the, the passage today, 
um, they are asking for this, like um, James and, and John is asking for. Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. They are asking for that. They are asking for something that they want to be glorified. They want to be like, oh, I want to be closer to you. I want to be very important, something like that, right? And then Jesus said in verse 38, you don't know what you are asking. Think about us, right? I don't know, like, what, what is your prayer request? Some of you guys have posted some of your prayer requests today. Some of you guys post um, two weeks ago. There are so many prayer requests. I believe there are so many. When we are worried, we, we, are, we then we will pray. Somehow it's not like this. It should not be like this, right? But somehow uh, we need some driving force for us to pray. But the question is still there. Do you know what you are asking? For example, like Opin o Olivians, the the, 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 the the national team, the player, they no one will pray like I, I don't want a gold medal, I want a silver, is okay, is good enough, right? So I think everyone wants to win, right? They will pray for the victory for sure. They will pray for the performance. And and this, if you are sick, a sick person, I, I will say you will pray for recovery for sure. No one will say I want I want COVID or something like that, right? Or 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 the, the disciple want to pray want to pray want want to be closer to jesus like like you are if, if you are in a concert you will pray uh you may not pray but you will buy a ticket like closer like a rapture games you want to be closer right you will not i, I want to like really far yeah for sure because of like maybe the the price or the cost of the ticket you you, you cannot but somehow we we have something we want right we have something we want but somehow i can say we don't really know what we are asking. Why? Because we have limited knowledge to everything. We don't know everything. So we think we want that. We think we know, but actually we don't know because our wisdom, our knowledge is so limited. I give you a, a, a fake example. Why I say it's a fake example is because it never happened, but I put my family in here. Um, so one day Mona is like cooking a turkey. Why it is fake? Because Mona never cooked a turkey, but but I put it as an example. And he is like cutting the turkey with a knife. And then young young Johnny uh, asked her, "Can I try too?" And Mona said no. And and, and young Johnny cry out now and then say, "No, not fair. Why I can do it and something like that, right? You can imagine that that can." Can be happened. Maybe it happened when you were young, right? But you you know the same thing is here. He Johnny actually does didn't know what he is asking. He may want to do. Hey, it sounds so fun, and it, it may be okay. And then I want to try. I can do it. But many years later, he he, he will know what is going on because at that time his knowledge is limited. His skill is limited, and that is the reason why. We ask for something and Jesus did not give us. That is a reason why we have so many unanswered prayer. It's not because Jesus cannot give you. It's because we don't know what we actually ask him. Right? For example, like we're asking for material possession. We're asking for so many things. But those things can ruin us. For example, we are asking for a phone. Right? Now we are controlled by a phone. Right? <laughs> We, we really want a phone, but the phone become our master somehow, right? It ruined us. But maybe many of you guys, younger generation, if you still have no phone, you really want a phone because everyone else has a phone somehow, right? For example, a relationship. A relationship we're asking for can drain us, right? I remember I, I asked my, my famous prayer request, my three famous prayer requests when I was young. My parents' salvation. I want a bunch of friends and I want a girlfriend. I remember I was like 15 and 16. I was so lonely. I don't have friends. Um, so I asked him, I pray for God, really praying for God for a girlfriend. And and you know, I I the the, the prayer was not answered until you until I, I was in university. I was so grateful because 
when I was in 16 and 15, I was not mature enough to handle that intimate relationship. And I, I think if I was answered by, by God, like, okay, I gave you like your hook friend, whatever you want, right? And then I think that relation would drain me up. And then I, I, I cannot do, I, I cannot do any other thing. My, my, my result would be so bad and everything. Like I cannot even go to university or something like that. I don't know. For example, like and if you are working, you may, you may pay for a promotion, right? You may pay, pay for uh, a better company or I don't know, like something that you are desired for. But somehow maybe power when you get uh, a higher rank or higher promotion uh, position, those power may corrupt you as well. So go back to the, the question is like, we may not know what we are really asking. And that is the reason why God is actually giving not answer our prayer because we have limited knowledge on everything. Uh, I think three weeks ago, or even a month ago, I, I got sick. Um, no, maybe three weeks ago, yes. I'm not good at, at, at the time. Thing. But but like I was so sick, you, you know that, right? And I was so sick. It is not COVID, I got tested, don't worry. Uh, but it was my birthday as well. I was so sick. And that sickness is like, maybe because I don't know what, what is happening is like the whole, the first week of that sickness, I cannot like do anything. I, I have a heavy headache. I was feeling cold all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing like maybe I have not been sick for two years. <laughs> never, never sick for two years. And then suddenly I was so vulnerable and then become like sick because of like going out <clears throat> for the heavy snow and going out and I'm weak. But but then th this thing is because I'm I'm having I, I'm I, I was like uh, my, my birthday. And then I'm thinking about like a birthday wish, right? And thinking about what, what should I do and then and 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 then after this the second week I have a time but I cannot go for the screen. I cannot go for the um I cannot go for uh a phone I, I I can only read, I can only read books or Bible or something for, for two hours or for a couple of hours. I cannot, I cannot like do the computer, but that is a blessing somehow. <laughs> and it become a, a retreat for me. It, it become a spiritual retreat with God during that time. And I have, I have good things. So, so somehow, um, but for sure, I'm, I'm praying for recovery for fast track. I, I want to be I'm working again. At, but I want to be healthy again. But God has a time for us. And during that week, when I can I can work a little bit, I have a I I, I have a good good like a rich time with God. I'm so grateful for that that time. So somehow we we don't know what we are really asking. God has different um, point of view for our life. Well, here the second point I want to I want to make is like he value process than result. You know, when we are asking, we are also ask we are always asking for results. We are thinking about a result, just like um, James and John in the glory. When when you are in glory, when Jesus is in glory, I, I want to sit with you like left and right. And the other other disciple heard that they they became indignant they are angry they were they were angry with with james and john why because they want that too right because in their culture you know right it is it's so important to sit with the with the master with the host if you are closer you are that means you are you are more important and and that is just the end result they are fighting for end result for us we are fighting for we are also looking for the result only. We want a job. <laughs> we want a good job. We want a, 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 a relationship. We want something like, but there's a process for everything that we may miss. And God knows it. And then he pointed out in here, he said, if you want to become great among you, must be your servants. And whoever wants to be first, must be slave of all. So there's a process to become great. There's a process to become first. But we miss that. We we are 
only focus on something that like I want the result. My God is talking about more about the process for us. Somehow prayer is a training for us to 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 become to to train to change us to become a, a, a training ground for us. I remember I give you an example. Uh, when I was young, I really want to become a police officer. When I was young, um, behind that, why I want to become a police officer is because uh, I, I heard uh, a police officer have a very good prospect. And it, 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 it have a good salary, it have good benefits. So I want to be, uh, I want to have that kind of job. Uh, so uh, I try, but I, I, I cannot. And, and then later on, I become a recreational officer. I'm still an officer, but a very different kind of officer for nine years. But I still have a dream. I still praying for, oh, one time, one day, maybe I can serve in a uniform group. You see there's an ambulance here, right? Uh, why, why is there? Is that because I got an interview maybe when I was in the sixth year in the government in Hong Kong. I got an interview uh, to become a paramedic officer. I was, I was happy. I continued to pray and I got second in. Uh, so I, oh, that is like so close now. And then I, I, I'm so happy. But that second interview ran so wrong. I, I went to a wrong interview location. <laughs> and I went back to the first interview place. And then when I was there, they said, it is not here. It is in the far, far away because the second in, you need to do more stuff. So I need to take a taxi to go to the other location, it was a mess. And, 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 and the interview was like, I was late and the interview was so hard and it was so bad. So sure, I'm here now. So that means I, I can't get that job. I was mad, I was frustrated because I prayed. It was not answered and I prayed for a long time, God was happening. So, but God make this, process to change me many years later i noticed that i cannot actually handle uh, wounds or injury especially blood <laughs> i cannot do it actually if, if god really answered my prayer i would be more messy i believe my life would be crazy i i would be kicked out from this position already and and god have a have a destiny for me and he called me to become a pastor now i have my uniform <laughs> I'm still serving God with a God uniform. It's so different, but God changed me. He used, he used so many things to change me. He is not answering me my prayer, but he asked me to value this process. And my last one in here is about something besides similar because God's timing and our timing is so different. You know, um, a pastor said, we became, we, we are becoming quickaholic. What is quickaholic? It means like we are ex expecting instant result, instant improvement, instant gratification. We want everything and we want it now, right? So that is the reason why next generation did not uh, pray that much. It's because we don't have patience. <laughs> We, we cannot wait when it is not coming through, if it's not answered right away, if the prayer was not answered right away. So we just pray for COVID, right? And then COVID did not end. Oh no, it's not working. We don't pray anymore. Something like that kind of thing is happening because we have that mentality. The mentality is a quickaholic because we are trained up everything. When we turn on the computer, we cannot wait for five seconds if the the computer was not like give give us like everything right away we think the computer was broken or too slow right and it we, we are trained for that we don't have patience for waiting anymore but God's timing is so different from us the the passage in here the second story is about a guy right a blind man 
Jesus and his disciples coming into the town with the large crowd. And then that blind man sitting there begging, and he cannot see, but he hear. So he shout, he shout, he shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But then the other people, hey, yeah, be quiet. Jesus is so busy. Don't do it, right? If you are a alcoholic, you may, you may just like it. forget about it. If you have no patience, you will just forget about it. But this guy demonstrates something called like patience, demonstrates something called uh, perseverance. And he, many of them rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more. So David, have mercy on you. And then you know the story. And then Jesus come to him and ask that same question. What can I do for you? And he asked, I want to see. And Jesus gave him. Yes, this is called persistent. This is called, we, we need to have some more patience. Because many things needs time, needs so much time. For example, if you go for planting, you will see planting mid time. You cannot like, like a plant, a water today, next morning, something come out, right? For sure, God can do instant miracle. But, but if he did not do it right away, there must be a reason. There must be something he knows and we don't. And he may want to train us. He want to train us to have patience as well. And he want us to build up character. And character building needs so much time. So this is the reason uh, why when we pray, sounds like our prayer was not answered. So we go back to this, how should we handle an answer prayer today? Somehow we need to admit that we don't know what we are somehow asking for. We may know we may think we know what we are asking for, but we don't have all the knowledge of everything, so we don't know. And then second, we need to also value the process than the result. Somehow it takes so much time to come with some conclusion or consequence. And the third one, God's timing is so different to our timing. We want it and we want it now. And God said, hey, Yes, I can give you, but somehow maybe something bad can come out with his timing. So you may know already, like Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find lock and the door will be open to you. You, you may already know that I, I, I talked to you guys already for a long time, for many times, like ask, seek and lock that action, that verb is in continuous tense. So which means you, you ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will be fine. Lock and keep on locking and the door will be open to you. And that is the way. So don't quit praying. Keep, continue to keep praying. If you want something so badly, and you can continue to pray for God. And in his time, you will get it in his time. So I, I just really want to encourage you today. And if you have something you are praying for for a long time, yeah, keep praying. God listen to us. And God know what is the best for us. Most of the time, he is asking us to wait. He did not give us right away. It's not, it's not saying he is un, uncapable to do it. It's because he knows what is best for us. So keep trusting and keep believing. Let's pray together. Father, we, we need you. We need you because we don't know. Somehow we can say we don't know anything. We have our desire in our heart. We have different things that we want. But Lord, the only thing I think we need is you, Lord. We need you the most. We just want to come to you. Yes, 
we can continue to pray. Maybe the prayer can change us. Maybe we will know that we should value uh, the process more. But the most important thing, Lord, let us, uh, let, let our eyes be open that we know what is the most important thing that we should ask for. Lord, we thank you. We know that we have you, and that is enough. But it helps us to know that we need you, and we need you only. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Let's respond to the word of God together. Now is the time for the Lord's Prayer. Oh, okay. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
and has received its benediction by faith. <clears throat> Let's pray together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. skipped over the offering slide but if you'd like to um do an offering yes you can send your offering to um inquire tcmc.ca through e-transfer or you can bring the check to the church so our announcements for today first one is for arts fellowship um in the spirit of chinese new year the coming theme of arts fellowship is chinese culture through the looking glass um, and you will be able to connect with your Chinese culture and create something based on your own personal memories. And so that will be this Tuesday at 8 p.m. on Zoom. And if you have any um, questions, you can always ask the committee members. <clears throat> our next announcement is about our church reopening happening next Sunday. So these are the times of the things that are happening. Our service will be at 1145 and it'll also be recorded and put on YouTube at 6 p.m. So you can choose to join in person or online according to your own needs and situations and follow the schedule. And all the updated in-person guidelines will be found in our WhatsApp chat. Um, our next announcement is about Easter Sunday baptism. For those who want to receive baptism confirmation or join TCMC as members on Easter Sunday, please contact any of the pastors who will plan for the preparation process. And our last announcement is about the summer student intern. We are hiring three full-time student interns to serve at the summer camp for a children's ministry. Um, please refer to the posting for details, which will be on the church website where you'll find it at church on Sunday. And the deadline is April 17th. If you have questions, you can ask Pastor Felix or Reverend Hahn. Um, that concludes our service for today. Um, yeah, after a moment of silent prayer, service will be concluded and we will see you all on Sunday.